Yo, what's going on guys? How are y'all doing? Hope you're doing uh, well today. So we got a new rumor going on and it's basically that Hayden Christensen has signed a deal. I don't know uh, if this is legit or not, but there's rumor going around and all these different articles are covering it. Hayden Christensen has signed a deal with Disney to um, and Lucasfilm to come back on the Obi-Wan show, not just as, you know, like a, a cameo, but as a recurring role on the show uh, on Disney Plus for when the Obi-Wan show comes out. This is going to be pretty interesting. Now, who knows if it's true? I really don't know. There's people just talking about I don't even know the source of this, so take it with a grain of sand, if you will, as Anakin would say. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about it as I've talked about it in some other videos before, but I think this is a really interesting topic. Obviously, it's something that all of us really want to happen. Um, it's something that I would love to see, and I've been wondering for a long time as to why they're not making like a Vader spinoff or um, even putting Anakin in any of the, the sequel projects or anything like that, right? Besides his voice that we got at the very end of Nine. So I want to know what you guys think about it. I'm going to talk about what I want to see. Uh, I have a little list that I'd like to go over. And uh, before we do, I'd like to say that on the gaming channel today in about an hour, once this stream ends, um, we're going to be doing a uh, Battlefront 2 mod. So we've got... You can see we've got uh, the sun right here, so we're going to be doing that. We're going to have some fun with that, um, as well as I'd like to I'd like to shout out my fantasy theory channel. We got the first video going: Starlight's top five powers and abilities. I don't know, you probably can't see it because my fat face is in the way, but it's right there. So go check that out when you have time. Now onto the video. Okay, yo, Mr. Memes, what's going on, man? How you doing? So what I'd want to see is. It can go to two different ways here, and I've explained this in di different videos, but it's always nice to divulge a little further. The first thing is we could see flashbacks, right? We've all seen those Photoshop images of um, Anakin in Clone Wars armor. By the way, big shout out to Sith Hayden on Instagram for the picture in the thumbnail. The second scenario that we could enter here would be what we all want to see, which is what I've been trying to do with the fan film, and that is seeing Anakin as Vader, you know, uh, in this time between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. And that's something that I've really been interested in, because there are so many different avenues that we can go into. Um, we can show Anakin as this figure, obviously it's going to take place about eight years after Revenge of the Sith, as, as they've alluded to, or you know, leaked or rumored. Uh, so, I'm thinking, if we get that, then, okay, Anakin has had eight years to become Vader. You know, he's done the whole arc with um, Momin, all of this stuff. So, he is more so Vader now than Anakin Skywalker. But still, there is much more Anakin within him than we saw in A New Hope and Return and all that stuff, Empire. So, what I want to see is this internal struggle between the Anakin that we know from Revenge of the Sith and the Vader that we know in Return of the Jedi, the old man. The thing here is that we haven't seen him for eight years, and this is going to be the first time that we see Anakin in anything to do with Star Wars after Episode 3. So they have to be very, very careful with what they do with his character because we have no knowledge of what has happened to him, you know, other than the comics and uh, books and this and that. But typically... When you're making a show, you don't really put all of those things into consideration, as I've learned, because that doesn't really hit, you know, the wide demographic of everyone that watches Star Wars. It's it's just, you know, the super fans like us, right? You guys watching this for the most part. So what I'm thinking is what we need to see is we need to see definitely a ton of Anakin's flashbacks. We need to see a ton of turmoil within Anakin as he became Vader. And still a lot of the things that he's dealing with now that he is Vader. Because I can imagine, you know, eight years, okay, he's sort of used to what it is like to be in this suit, to be um, this figure in the galaxy. But at the same time, we want to see, I want to see, you know, in the books it explained, it was horrendous. It, it, it would go over how he basically, it was really sad, to be honest. It, it was like... <laughs> I remember, I think it was the, the Rise of Darth Vader or something like that. Um, Dark Lord, the Rise of Darth Vader was explaining how his helmet had like a thousand needles that get, went into his head and each one pricked him and it was like very, very uncomfortable. So it's not like this helmet that just goes on. It's embedded in his body, right? So he's, there's wires, there's tubes, everything going in him. There is a long freaking 
the apparatus that goes into his trachea and it goes down into his chest. And like like this suit is intertwined with his organic being. And I think that's something that I would love to see personally. And it's something I haven't seen anyone touch upon or talk about really at all because it's something that's more in the lore, right? Like I want to see the discomfort that Anakin has to go through now and it really would show how much his life has changed because we see the physical and all that. But what about the internal? You know, what, what's going on with his mind? What's going on with his internal body, right? So when he breathed all those flames, it scorched his lungs and his throat. And that's why if you actually hear Anakin speak, Vader speak without the helmet, it's going to be like this. It's really just very, very weak. So I would love to see that also as well in the, in the show, to see Anakin speak uh, without the suit on, you know, something was ha would happen. Maybe he like goes up against, I don't know, like a big ship or something, and uh, you know, man against ship or cyborg against ship, and uh, his suit gets partially destroyed. And um, this is a concept art from from Vader Episode Two, by the way. Uh, where I'll get out of the way. Let's see, you're just kneeing Mace in the face, and I'd like to see more of this mask come off completely, right? And I'd like to have it where. You can just hear his voice and you really hear the raspiness within him. I'd like to, to see the droids go to work on his body. Um, so they would have to wipe him of necrotic flesh, of dying flesh, all the time because that's just what was going on with his body, man. He was burnt. He was a burn victim, a you know, severe burn victim. So that's definitely something that I'd want to see. I'd want to see him maybe even communing with Qui-Gon Jinn. I think that would be something that's interesting as well. Qui-Gon could maybe reach out to him through the Force, and since he is, of course, a Sith now, it may be more difficult for him to hear that, but he could still maybe hear jarbled bits here, and they're like static, like a radio frequency that's not really going through, and because the reason for this would be because he's partially still Anakin Skywalker, and as Luke always said, he always could hear, could feel the, the heart within Vader that is Anakin Skywalker, you know, to the point of his death to return of the jedi and that's you know what kept him going so with you guys i want to know what you guys think um tons of different avenues we could explore we could explore a very hardened anakin uh one that we don't really know anymore or we could explore one that's kind of um teetering on anakin and vader and that's i think more interesting because we've seen the vader that's cold and callous and what I want to see is this Anakin that's stuck between, you know, kind of like a purgatory. Like, he's like, ah, I, don't, I don't know yet. And, of course, eventually he totally tips to Vader. Well, not totally, but a good portion of him does. So, what are you guys thinking? Hope you're doing well, brother man. Thank you, Sebastian. What up, Parth? What up, Third Man 3? Third Man 3 says, I'm fine with seeing Hayden as Anakin, but you can only do so many flashbacks. This isn't a Vader show. It's Obi-Wan. Anakin will be a part of it, but I don't think he will be a major point. Maybe there will be a fight with Obi-Wan and Vader, but that won't be the whole show. Maybe a C story. Hayden doesn't need to be in the suit, to be honest. Um, no, Hayden doesn't need to be in the suit, but when they take the mask off, he better be there. I want to see his face. And I don't think Vader is going to fight Obi-Wan. Um, because in the books it said that this is the first time they've met in all this time, so since Mustafar. But of course they can change things, and those are legends and all that, so um, that can always be rewritten. I think the whole thing, the part, the parts of Anakin will be maybe him f trying to find where Obi-Wan is, kind of like Darth Maul. And in the end, he just never does. Um... Vader did go back to Tatooine in the comics, in the canon comics, so it is possible, but unlikely, right? They would be changing a whole storyline there. Hello there, love your channel, bro. So happy to hear that the news Hayden's coming back. We don't know if he's coming back. This is a rumor. We're not sure. Uh, amazing work, and may the force be with you. Thank you, Kenneth. I appreciate that, man. You liked the boys' video on the Fantasy Channel? Great. Thank you, man. Okay, so... How could Anakin commune with Qui-Gon? It is possible, but at the same time, I, while I'd like to see, I think it's unlikely. What I would like to see, of course, it's if it is the Obi-Wan show, as Third Man 3 said. And that's something that they definitely need to stick to, but having Anakin in there is like having Baby Yoda in the Mando, right? So we have that, that entrance of the Force of this other species of Yoda, the most powerful Jedi in history, or at least one of. 
And then on top of that, we have the Mando. It is all about Mandalorians and Mercs and this and that. And then we've got the entrance of, you know, Moff Gideon, who's like Moff of the Broken Empire now. And then we have the Darksaber. And it's just, there's all of this stuff that's tying in there. So one reason I was so excited for the, the Cassian Andor series was because it can tie in that time period, right? I loved Rogue One, and I feel like it could really bring all of that stuff together. Um, you can bring the Empire, you can bring Palpatine, you can bring everything. I think we could even see Palpatine in this, but I see us seeing maybe a silhouette of him, um, perhaps a voice. Um, you know, I could see Vader or, or someone in the Empire going to his throne room and speaking to him, and, you know, he's got his back turned in his, in his chair, and he's like, Yes, Admiral, do what must be, or, you know, something like that. And... I don't think they'd actually like show his face. I think they'd maybe use Ian McDermott's voice, but I don't know if they'll put him in costume. I think it would be too huge. I think it would be too big. But, hey, I'd love to be wrong about that. As for Anakin, no, we don't need to see him. Uh, we don't need to have him in the suit the whole time, obviously, because there's a certain cadence to Vader's walk and movements. And um, Vader's jacked, man. Like, that's the thing. That's that's something about him. You know, David Prowse was jacked as heck. He was a bodybuilder, right? So... Um, in his in his hobby time, so he's this big, physically and emotionally imposing figure. So the person in the suit doesn't have to be Hayden, um, but whenever that mask comes off, I want to see Hayden's face. You know, and that's something that I, I my gripe with Rogue One is that they actually had Hayden's face um, on the the mannequin or whatever it was, the the dummy, um, but we never got to see it. So that's something, that's a connection I'd always, always love to see, always like to see in that, in that sense. <sighs> really want to see Vader just unleash anger in ways we have yet to see and show more of that internet conflict, the war within. Inter <laughs> internet conflict. Internal conflict. Yeah, I agree. So as I said in the beginning, I'd really want to see something with Vader in the beginning um, where we see all of that rage that he has and he's as he's teetering between Anakin and Vader right his, what his life has become that pisses him off Padme dying that pisses him off um, Sidious lying to him and tricking him pisses him off uh, all the Jedi are dead pisses him off what happened to his body pisses him off Obi-Wan winning pisses him off everything in his life piss the fact that he in the book it goes into great great detail about how he can't even sleep because Palpatine designed the suit to be so annoying that it's constantly beeping. Uh, he, his breathing makes so much noise all the time, and the lights are constantly keeping him awake in the dark. So he can't even, my, my man can't even sleep, okay? So that's something that's, re like, his whole life is terrible. T absolutely terrible. So he doesn't have comfort in his mind, in his soul, or in his physical body. And that's something that they really, really need to touch on because the books did a really great job at that. What if Vader and Obi-Wan actually discover and have a forced diet? No, no, I don't want any more forced diets. I don't want any more of those. <laughs> and using the diet, try to bring Padme back and somehow get Vader to turn to the light side? No. No. Look, Vader's story is already told uh, where he ends up. We know where he begins. We know where he ends up. The middle part, do what you want. As long as it doesn't change anything to do with how he is in the... I don't see Vader ever trying to turn to the light during this whole period. Like, that just wouldn't happen. That's just not... His whole gradient is going from light to dark. And then in the end, it just completely switches to white. To the light side. So, that can't be changed. But what happens in between in terms of him turning into the dark, I think would be very interesting to see. As well as seeing his conflict with the light. That doesn't mean he turns to the light or tries to turn to the light. His conflict with it. So. Right. Kylo was a good kid that wanted to be evil. But he was just good at the end of the day. Like he just. He was forcing it. Anakin was. Anakin was a good kid who got pushed so far. That he wanted to be anything but where he was. And where he was, was good. So I don't even think Anakin really sees it from, from the point of view of him being evil. I think he sees the Jedi as actually being evil. And them being stupid and corrupt completely. And I think 
that's why he has chosen this path alongside the fact that Padme uh, was going to die and he was trying to save her. So I think in his brain, you know, when he says, you know, the Jedi are evil, I think he genuinely meant that. And Obi-Wan's, then you are lost. And he's like, it's because he was lost. But in his mind, I'm pretty sure he felt that he wasn't. He felt the Jedi were messed up in the head and they were, you know, it's treason, you know, all that stuff. He, like, why would they do that? Heard this rumor before The Force Awakens, before The Last Jedi, and before The Rise of Skywalker. I really hope it's true this time, though. Me too. Me too. And I've done a few videos on this, but it seems like now this is picking up steam, so I don't know. Could you play Skyrim on the gaming channel? <laughs> sure. Tonight we're doing Ghosts of Tsushima uh, for the first time at midnight. Pre-ordered it a while ago, so make sure you tune in. Uh, midnight PST. So um, it's going to be good. I'm really excited for the game. I would like something similar to the dyad, but more Obi-Wan trying to communicate with him or something and having a physical representation of it. I don't want any more dyads, man. Um, the idea is interesting, but at this point, you know, it, I want to see some really dark, corrupt stuff in Star Wars, man. I want to see vader just unleash hell i don't want to see any more of this like oh i'm struggling with the light side i want to see him like like no he is pissed off his whole life is destroyed his body is destroyed his powers are destroyed the only thing keeping him going is his rage and at the end of the day that is fueled by his sorrow so we need to see a bit of that sorrow which will then in, in turn morph into that rage that we see and it'll kind of give us a bit of a, a light on that light light on that matter so that's definitely something that I'd love to to witness on screen, uh, on my on my TV. Could they tie in some Vader Immortal into this? Um, I don't think they will. I mean, it seems like the writers from uh, Episode Nine didn't even know about Vader Immortal, right? Because I remember one dude, the, the Eye of the Webbish Bog. Do you guys remember that part where Kylo was supposed to go to Vader's castle, and there was this like big um, monster creature that was guarding the Wayfinder? I think one of the concept artists or one of the writers or something were like, they said something, I, I don't remember exactly what it was, I did a video on it, and they said something, and I was like, well, we have the answer already to, in, to that in Vader Immortal. Uh, so, yeah, he was talking about how the planet turned into, um, from lava to uh, a little more trees and green and stuff like that. I'm like, well, we have the answer. So, I don't think, I don't know if they're like aware of all that. So, I think Vader Immortal is its own thing, but it is canon. I'd love to see incorporation of it because I think it's one of the coolest stories. But um, at the end of the day, who knows? <sighs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Uh, not being Vader to the light side. Not being Vader to the light side, but he tries to bring Padme back and the VR game failed. Not saying Vader turns to the light side, but Obi-Wan hoping that if he helps Vader get Padme back, he can bring Anakin back. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I think I think Vader would be so hell-bent on doing it himself, and uh, he's just lost all trust in the Jedi, uh, that he just... It's po it's interesting. It's possible. But I don't... I don't know. That's not something I'd want to see. I'd want to see Vader just fully commit. You know, I want to see him be, like, mopey a little bit and then fully commit. Like... I want to see moments of mopiness within Rage. Do you think we'll see flashbacks of Clone Wars and Obi, Anakin, Ahsoka, Rex, and Cody? I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. I could see Padme making a cameo. Any thoughts? Um, yeah, if they do the world between worlds thing. Muhammad Hamdan, thank you, dude. Uh, Randora says, where did Anakin Scar come from? Padme's kiss from episode two. When he said he's worried that the kiss would <laughs> make him a scar. <laughs> Probably a dumb question. Anakin's scar came from Asajj Ventress from the Clone Wars. So uh, they were fighting and then she sliced his eye. Yeah, the communication between the two representing that. Obi-Wan reaching out and appalled by how cruel he's become. Draconian Viking. Um, that's also an interesting thing because Obi-Wan doesn't know that Anakin survived. He thinks, like, okay, yeah, maybe, but there's how, how, you know, he left him there and he, he couldn't actually kill him. So he just left him to die. And, um, that's, 
that's something that they would have to really touch on is how does Obi-Wan know that Vader is this imposing figure that has returned and is alive. So in the in Legends, he heard it in a bar. Three movies wasn't enough to tell Anakin's fall to the dark side story. I agree. Uh, who's directing the show? I think it's Deborah Chow. I think, right? And she directed a few episodes of Mando, and she did a fantastic job. Fantismo. What did uh, what did George Lucas always stamp on the on the concept arts he really liked? Fabuloso. So George had this stamp, and he'd go around stamping uh, concept designs that he'd have people, you know, his team that he'd hired, um, and he'd stamp if he really loved it, like beyond good, fabuloso. He'd have a freaking stamp that said fabuloso on it, and he'd just stamp it. That means like he wants that design. Um, and if you got like a good or an okay, it means like it's okay, but it could u- use work. I always thought that was so funny. Guy was so funny. I'd like to see Galen Merrick, aka Starkiller. Yeah, that that's a storyline that would be very interesting, but I feel like um, I don't think that'll ever make that canon at all. I think um, it was said that Starkiller was supposed to be how powerful Luke was going to be if he had trained under Vader. So if you literally replace Starkiller with Luke, it, that's how that's how strong he's going to be. Off topic, will we ever see Old Republic come to life like the story of Darth Bane? I think so. I think maybe in the next 10 years. Uh, do you think he will start to think of the good old times with Anakin and him in the Clone Wars and what he has done now after Revenge of the Sith to have to protect Luke? Absolutely. I want the Kenobi show to have this scene. I always did. Him waking up in you know, the night terrors and in sweats. And um, it's all dark and you only see like a little bit of Ewan's face. And... Uh, he's just really traumatized and he just woke up from a nightmare. So we could even start off by him and Anakin in the clone wars. And then, uh, it could be Anakin's face close up, like smiling and then boom flash. It's him burning like a very close to the same image of him smiling. It's him burning and like in flames. And I think that would be a really, really cool transition. And then you and waking up, uh, just in, you know, beads of sweat. I think it would be pretty so you could just see like what he's going through every night and it would kind of be like that scene in the last samurai where um tom cruise was going over he was getting rid of his his uh addiction to alcohol um where he was always asking for sake and he like he didn't get any and it's just like you see the outside of the hut and like he's just screaming and he's tormented and that's i want to see a darker turn in this i think that's something that would be really cool and interesting Dude, you kept me sane through lockdown. Love you. Hey, thanks, Alfredo. Uh, what is better in your opinion, Legends or Canon? Um, it's hard to say. I like Legends more, but there are some parts of Canon now that I really, really enjoy, such as the Vader comics. I think they're really cool. But I think the Legends Vader comics from Dark Horse are much more interesting. The more dark, the more gritty, and um, yeah, they're cool. I like them. And what is this I hear about Luke having a yellow lightsaber or something like that? That's one reason why I, I'm not really covering the comics anymore. Like, that's one of the ways I always started my channel was fan fictions and comics. And, uh, dude, I love covering comics. Like, the, the style that I started and, and used and all that, it, it's my favorite way of telling stories. I think it's so entertaining and they're fun to make. But it's just some of the stuff I'm just like... That's why I don't really cover them anymore. I'm just like, what? This is... Uh, come on. So Luke now had a yellow lightsaber in between here. Like, it's just it just it's just getting hard for me to kind of like make them because I'm or cover them because I'm like, ah, it's a stretch. Uh, why is no one talking about Liam Neeson returning as Qui Gon Jinn? Well, we haven't heard about it, and Liam Neeson apparently has retired, right? But or is that a rumor? But I'm pretty sure he'd come back as like a voice. And the thing is that in the book, from a certain point of view, which is canon. Um, of course, they can change this. I've said this before. Um, he doesn't materialize in front of Obi-Wan as Qui-Gon Jinn until just before A New Hope. So we would just hear his voice if they want to stay true to that. If they don't want to stay true to that, then, yeah, whatever. Do what you want, you know. I wish there's at least some part of Vader's story arc in the Vader comics in the Kenobi series. Yeah, I hope so too. So that's definitely something that I'd love to see. I'd love to see Vader's arc, and that's 
pretty much what we've been talking about this whole this whole stream. Iconic, what up, dude? What's going on, man? What time is it here? Do I have to? No, we got another little bit until I got to go on the gaming channel and uh, stream on there for you guys. Um, another thing that could be interesting if they want to make that cannon is Plagueis. So we could, at this point, Vader's still trying to learn the ability to bring Padme back. And he's doing everything that he can. We saw that in Vader Immortal. We saw that in everything else. So another plot line that we could take with Anakin, with Vader, is him trying to get Padme back. And I could see him, you know, doing his best to get her back in some sort of way, using some Sith magic or something. Uh, maybe following, like, an Easter egg hunt somewhere of, like, someone who knows how to bring her back or bring back the dead. And you just see him, like, take off his helmet in his chamber, and he's, like, hyperventilating, and he's just, like, all burnt up and scarred, and he's just having a really tough time, like, fathoming, like, what has happened and uh, after, like, a long battle or something. I think, I think seeing Hayden's face would be, we would see it as much as we saw uh, Petro Pascal's face in the Mando. I think that's how often we would see it. Not very often, but just enough so that we know he's there and that it's him. And I think to have that connection would be very, very important. I think it would be very foolish of them not to take advantage of that because that would literally make the show so much more than what it already is promised to be with Ewan. Do you think Ahsoka will come to Obi on Tatooine? It is possible. Love your work, man. Keep it coming. Thanks, dude. Guten Abend, mein Freund. Wie geht's? Uh, mir geht's gut. Und selbst? Was los? Uh, do you think... Hey, man. Uh, it was summer and hot, and the kyber crystal got tanned, and that's why Luke had the yellow lightsaber. <laughs> Tan saber. If we see Vader scenes, I'd love it if they have Obi-Wan having visions of Vader just destroying any Jedi who have survived Order 66. That would be something I really want to see, too, is we could even see nightmares for Anakin you know and that would really show that he is human I think that's something that would be really impressive to see the Star Wars comic run by Charles Soule so far is strange but amazing so far Soule in my opinion is on par with some of the best Legends EU writers I agree Soule is a really really great writer uh, by the way the first two Lego Star Wars games actually had games actually had got me interested into watching Star Wars movie films. Oh, cool. No way. A very long time ago. Uh, do you know Stupendous Wave? And if so, would you do a collaboration fan fiction? Nope. Got a hop. Much love theory. Uh, shout out to the mods. Thanks, Parth. Pretty sure. Oh, 50 bucks, dude. Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, guys, um, if you are super chatting, I'd love it if you just became a joint member instead. It's probably cheaper for you. And then you get access to all the exclusive stuff. And um, Once Upon a Theory is about to drop pretty soon. So the last last episode of the season. So, um, yeah. Uh, what would you think of some what-if sitcom of Anakin if he didn't turn to the dark side, raising his kids with Padme, Uncle Obi-Wan, and Aunt Ahsoka? What the hell? That'd be fun, funny, I guess. Um, a while ago, I created this uh, what-if Star Wars was recorded in front of a live audience. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, I still have it somewhere. I can see Ahsoka showing up and taking Kenobi um, to the WBW <laughs> and team up with an alternative alternative Anakin. Alternate Anakin that arrests Palps uh, if it's a flashback. <sighs> I don't want any more time travel, man. I don't want any more world between worlds. I don't want any more time travel. I think it's just it ruins stories. I feel like this rumor will evolve into an actual Vader series, maybe running parallel to the Kenobi series, and we get visions and flashbacks in both. Look, my Vader fan film and uh, a few of the other ones out there have really shown Disney exactly how high the demand is for a Vader series. And uh, we got the join members rolling in. Great, guys. I want to see. I want to see tons more. If we can get like a hundred join members today. I mean, instead of donating two bucks, just become a join member and you get access to um, Once Upon a Theory, all the, the exclusive stuff on there, emojis, 15% uh, off merch, everything, or whatever you want. Well, not whatever you want, but. Yeah, and that's the thing. It, it's the cool thing with rumors and, and the internet where we as the fans, we kind of show them what we want and what we like. And hopefully they'll listen to it because at the end of the day, 
They are a company. They want to make money. It's kind of like with Deadpool. When that leaked, the little uh, trailer, which wasn't even done, or the, the snippet of the film leaked, fans went crazy, and they made it happen. So I really believe that fans have more leverage. I, I read some stupid tweet once by someone, and he said, uh, influencers are irrelevant. What a ridiculous thing to say. What a ridiculous thing to say, man. Influencers hold the consensus, I would say, for your target market. So if you've got, let's say, a, 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 a gamer and they've got like 10 million subscribers, what they say is going to influence a lot of people. But not only that, what the fans say to him or her will also influence them and they will broadcast things that the fans want to see, right? So influencers work on views, right? So if, if you upload something that gets uh, really shitty views, most likely you're going to try to stay away from that because it's just not in the game of being an influencer, of being a content creator. If you're an idiot like me, you'll upload stuff that doesn't get views, but you'll just keep pushing at it because that's what you like to do. But at the end of the day, influencers have a major pull, and I do believe your comment that um, fans can really show companies what we want. And I think that's something that shouldn't be undermined. They should listen to us because we're the ones paying the bill and keeping the lights on. So flashback is quite a good idea. Possibly nightmares such as Anakin winning, etc. cetera. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Um, Vader had, or, or was it Vader or Obi-Wan had a dream? Anyways, Vader was in his suit on Mustafar. There wasn't Anakin anymore. He was in his suit on Mustafar, and he was fighting Obi-Wan, and it was the same thing. He was like, you underestimate my power. And it was like the same exact thing, same exact lines, but he was in his suit. So that's pretty interesting, too. And then there was another one where Vader was fighting Anakin on Mustafar. <laughs> and he freaking, Anakin jumps over him. Vader grabs him, and he's like dragging him into the lava, and he's like, I am accustomed to killing children. And it's like, they, they're so cool. Like, well, I, I would love to see something like that. Sebastian, thank you. Michael, thank you. So Liddy, thank you. Thank you, dude. Anakin Ghost, separate to Vader, the Force Awakens concept art. Nah, that wouldn't work because he's alive. Anakin is still within Vader at this point. We got to remember that. Hayden, what? Hells yeah. It's a rumor, so I hope we see it. At the very least, these kind of videos and this kind of hype and stuff and these rumors and stuff like that, when, when influencers like myself and, and others out there talk about this stuff we really push the narrative of what fans want and people can see you know companies can see that what we want so at the end of the day they're going to do whatever the hell they want to do but uh, as we've seen but i still believe that we do have some bit of influence it's going to be in the back of their minds when they make certain decisions of uh you know and this this goes for the not like dave filoni and stuff because he knows more about star wars than any one of us but people who don't know star wars that don't understand star wars and um who was it that i think in Solo, I saw a clip of Sam Witwer talking about s something regarding Solo, and he's he he corrected one of the one of the writers or directors or something like that, and then he's like, I don't want to like tread on your on, on and they're like, no no no, please tell us like what's the deal with this? So, um, a lot of these writers don't know all of the lore that the fans and and the hardcore guys like Sam Witwer and stuff like that know, so it's very important that we do have our voices heard. So it's not for nothing. You know, they are listening. They are watching. Sounded like Vader. They are watching. Thank you for bearing with me, Theory. <laughs> Thanks, Dan the Man. Uh, Star Force One. Roll, roll the Jong. Thank you for becoming a new member, guys. Uh, made a fan film in first grade. I consider it canon. You should. Canon is whatever you want it to be. Braden Erickson is a new member. Thank you, man. Um, FNAF3. How do I become a join member? Um, I usually put the link, but I haven't been lately because I've just been like, yeah, if they want to do it, they'll do it. Um, it's you just go on your PC and uh, you click the join button by my channel on the on the channel page. Cameron Proctor is a new member. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. All right, how much time do we have? Yeah, we got some more time. With some more time. What do you guys want to see? Are we going to talk a little more about this? You want to see some of the Once Upon a Theory? It's pretty much all done. Um, I was playing some uh, Republic Commando last night on the gaming channel. It was really fun. 
It was good times. Do I want to see a movie about the Old Republic? Of course. I think that's one of the coolest eras in Star Wars. If you change one thing from the sequel, I don't not another sequel question. Uh, hey, thank you for inspiring me to build a new Minecraft world. Oh, cool. Congrats, man. Revenge of the Sith game, PS2, Anakin kills Obi-Wan. Play Minecraft? No. <laughs> no, I didn't want to. Um, we're gonna we're gonna stream this in a little bit on the gaming channel, so go find the link in the description below. Um, it's gonna be a trip. It's gonna be fun. Well, I don't really have anything else to say, guys. Uh, I had really enjoyed this stream. I guess uh, I'll catch you guys later in the next one. And uh, oh, thank you, Lego Anakin Skywalker Padawan, for becoming a new member. Thank you guys. Um, am I missing anything? I don't think I have anything else to say. So, love you all. Thanks for chilling with me on the stream. We got a stream on the gaming channel right after this. So, in about 15 minutes. And then we'll do Ghost of Tsushima tonight as well on the gaming channel, which is a beautiful, beautiful game. Ro, you are the best. May you stay litty in the force while I work for iHeartRadio. Keep doing your thing. Hey, cool. That's awesome, man. That's cool, man. Give me a shout out on the radio. On the radio. Or even have me on as a guest. I don't care. It'd be fun. Um, we have a new guest as well coming on Rule of Two um, at the end of this month, possibly. So, uh, big, big guest. So, uh, stay tuned for that. Cross fingers. Let's hope it goes through. And, uh, yeah. Will Ian McDermott be in the Kenobi series? I don't know, but it would be a great loss if he wasn't. Force Awakens, 10 out of 10. The Last Jedi, 9 out of 10. The Rise of Skywalker, 8 out of 10. That's great. Uh, I'm glad you really enjoyed them, man. You just joined? Cool. Can someone start playing Imperial March on Fantasy Theory? You don't know if you'll be up tonight? Oh, well. That's okay, Lily. Do you think the Clone Wars and Vader's downfall would have been different if Ahsoka was Obi-Wan's Padawan instead of Anakin's? No, I don't think Obi-Wan would have been able to handle Ahsoka, man. She was she was wild, too. The wild one. Yeah. Koti is a new initiate. Uh, you should do a Once Upon a Theory about Darth Revan. Well, so this series is going to end, and then we're going to go on to um, Season 2, which is going to be really, really entertaining. And um, to know where that's going to go, it's going to take a bunch of different franchises and put them together, meld them together. And uh, different storylines. It's going to be cool. So um, I'm excited for it. I think it's the best animation so far. We'll see. See how it goes. See how it goes. Um, definitely sets us up for a lot for season two. And uh, it's all the all the patrons and the join members that are really paying for those animations. So appreciate you guys. And I definitely want to give back to you all. So uh, that's why I'm making it exclusive for the time being. What about Yoda in the series? Yoda will be in this episode as well, briefly. Um, Yo, Fanks is a new member. Thank you, dude. Uh, do you think you and McGregor will use a voice that's similar to Alan Gill? Uh Yeah, he might raspy, raspin up his voice a little bit. He'll need to, right? So we'll see with that. We'll see with that. So in the comics, you know how little Annie's face was Vader's mask? Yes, what if... That happened to Obi-Wan's nightmares in the Obi-Wan series. Or that, that would be pretty terrifying. That was a really terrifying scene. When he was uh, on board Padme's ship. And then he just turns into like, his face literally like morphs into like Vader's mask. It was weird. I really hope this rumor is true because I really want to see Hayden in big projects again. Maybe this could get him a gig in the MCU or something like that. In the MCU? Bro, forget the MCU. I want to see him in Star Wars. <laughs> Okay, gaming time. I'll see you guys on the gaming channel. We'll resume there. And um, see you guys in tomorrow's video. Lots more to come. Lots more fan fictions. Uh, Shatterpoint, the Darth Bane trilogy, and uh, Luke's Point of View book. Um, so, uh, tons to come. And, and, and I'm going to cover some old comics, some Legends comics that I really enjoy as well. Um, 
Thank you, Tyler, for becoming a new patron. Appreciate that, man. And um, love you guys. See you later.